Welcome to the wonderful world of BaseRow, where we help you organize your data. In this video, we're going to explore some of the different field types that BaseRow offers and configuration of fields and rows. Across the top of the BaseRow interface, we have a list of fields or columns that we want to define for each entry or row of data inside of our BaseRow tables. BaseRow supports many different types of fields depending on what type of data you're going to store inside of your table. Using the right field type in your BaseRow tables will help strengthen the integrity of your data and make it more easily searchable. First up, let's explore the sample fields in a new table. When you create a new base row table, you'll have the name, notes, and active fields. You can remove these fields and create your own. To edit the value of a field, simply double click on it and go ahead and start typing. To change the field type, click on the drop down box next to the field in the header row and click on edit field. You can select a custom name for the field, and you can also select the data type that you plan on using for that particular field. In addition, depending on what type of field you select, you may have some advanced configuration options available for that field. For example, for single line text fields, you can pass in a default value for any new data rows. Now let's talk about a few of the field types that are available in base row. The simple text field or single line text field here is useful for storing basic string data, such as a person's first or last name, a company name, street address, and similar types of data. Let's go ahead and create a new single line text field called customer name, and I'll do that inside of a customer's table. So down here, I'll go ahead and go under my database, go to the name for the table, call it customers, and create that new table. Then we'll go ahead and just edit the built-in field on the far left here, and we'll call this customer name, and we'll set it to single line text and just hit save. Let's add a couple of records here just to make our data a little more interesting. Great, now we have a few customers entered into our base row database. Let's go ahead and go to our other sample table here, and we're going to rename this to orders. So just imagine that we are building an online retail management system. The number field type allows you to store numerical data. If we go into the field type selector here, we can just scroll down and look for number right here. And this allows us to track retail data such as item cost, order total, shipping cost, or even social network data such as the number of likes, retweets, or shares. Let's go ahead and create a field in the orders table called the order total. To create a new field, I'll just scroll over to the right hand side here, and then we'll click on the plus sign and add a new field of the type number, and we'll call this order total. You can see under the advanced options for the number field type here that we can specify the number of decimal places. And since most orders are gonna have two decimals down to the penny value, at least in US dollars, we'll go ahead and choose to have two decimal places here. Also, orders can't be negative unless maybe you're doing something like refund processing. So we'll just leave allow negative unchecked here and click on create. And now we have an order total field. Because we've selected the number field type, we can't plug in any text data here. Instead, we have to enter num numeric data such as 123.10, and that will conform to our two decimal places. The Boolean field type is either on or off. If we go under our field types here, you can see that we've got Boolean right down here. And this is useful for marking data as things like marking a task completed or designating a customer account in good standing or not, or determining the state of a light switch if you're building a home automation integration. Let's add a field to our orders table called shipped that'll designate whether or not the order has been shipped through a shipping provider. I'll go ahead and just rename this active field here since I don't need that one. So we'll hit the drop down, go to edit field, and then we'll use shipped as the name and Boolean is the field type here. So let's go ahead and save that. And now we can click on this checkbox right here to designate that this order has been shipped. The date field type enforces integrity on your data based on the Gregorian calendar. 
So if we scroll down here in the field types, you can see that we've got date right here. And once we choose the date field type, we have some advanced options, including how dates are going to be displayed, whether or not to include a specific time of day, and whether or not to display the local time zone. Let's go ahead and customize this second field right here to use the date field type. So let's choose that from the field type, and then we'll simply rename this field to order date, and we'll also include the time, and we'll show the local time zone for any users of this table. We'll go ahead and click on the save button to save our changes. And now when we double click inside of this field, we have the opportunity to specify a particular date as well as a particular time with minute level granularity. And you can also see the time zone of my local system being displayed here in the table. If you'd like to resize a field, just click on the divider between the fields and crunch it down to the desired size. Let's go back to the customers table right here and discuss the single select and multi select fields. As you can see, we have several different customers entered into this customers table here, but let's say that we wanted to classify these businesses based on the business type. We'll go ahead and click on the drop down here and say insert a field to the left and we'll call this business type. And then we can choose either a single select or a multi select depending on your preferences. For now, I just want to classify businesses based on a single business type. So I'll choose single select. Under the advanced options for single and multi select, you can specify one or more options that you want to be available to anyone inserting data into this table. Let's add two different options. One we'll call manufacturing. And for the second option here, we'll call this restaurant. You can also assign a color to each of these categories or options inside of this field type. So let's click on create. And now we can classify each of these businesses using this drop down selection. So we'll assign manufacturing to row number one, and then we'll assign a restaurant to rows two and three. Another useful field type in BaseRow is the file field type that allows you to upload binary data blobs such as JPEG, PNG, or GIF image files. Let's add a new field right here. So we'll say insert right, and I'll call this customer logo. And then down under the field type, we'll go ahead and select the file type right here and click on create. There's no custom options or advanced options for this particular field type because it simply holds an array of files. It's really easy to attach files to the file field type in base row. I've already generated a customer logo using stable diffusion. And so I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop that customer logo into that file field type. While dragging and dropping is one option, you can also click on the little plus sign here, and then you can click on this box to select from a local file on your device, or you can choose a specific URL where you'd like to import a file from. If you'd ever like to reorder the fields in your base row tables, you can simply click on the header for a particular field and move it into the appropriate position. And if you're dealing with large amounts of data, you can temporarily hide certain fields from the view without having to delete that particular field. So if you click on hide fields up here, there's these toggle switches that you can use in order to select which fields you want to be currently displayed. For example, let's say temporarily we don't need access to the customer logo, so we can disable that field from the view and it'll disappear, but that data is still present inside of the table and we can always reactivate it later on. At the moment, we have two different tables, one containing a list of orders and one containing a list of customers, but we don't have any links between them. Another piece of functionality that BaseRow provides is the ability to link certain fields in a particular table to records or rows inside of a different table. Let's say that in our orders table here, we want to link an order to a particular customer. Let's add another new custom field. We'll say insert left right here, and we'll just call this customer. And this field is going to link to a specific record in the customer's table. So to do that, we'll go ahead and just search for the link to table field type right here. And then we can choose which table inside of our base row database that we want to create a link to. 
So in this case, I'm going to link to the customer's table, and I'll just uncheck this box for now that says create related field in linked table, which will modify the customer's table as well, but I don't need that for the present moment. Let's go ahead and create that field. And now every time that we place an order, we can associate a specific customer with that order. All we need to do is select the appropriate record to associate with that order. And now you can see that we have a reference between the orders table and the customers table. So every time we create a new order, we can go ahead and assign a different customer to each of those orders with a different order date as well as a different order total. In this orders table here, it doesn't really make sense to have a person's name. So I'm actually gonna change this first field right here to a numeric data type or number data type. And then we'll change the name of it to order ID. We'll go ahead and save that. And now we can associate a number with each of our orders uniquely. There are other types of data fields available inside of base row. So feel free to explore the base row user interface and documentation, and don't be afraid to experiment. Once you get the hang of base row, you'll be better equipped to build custom applications. Check out the other videos on our base row channel to get a better idea of the platform's capabilities and subscribe to the channel for updates. Thanks for watching.